Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Hip Hughes History. Um, I was just talking to a kid and I asked the kid what the Elastic Clause was and he said it means Congress can do anything it wants that's necessary and proper. And I said, Doe, you are wrong. Everybody out there, we need to understand the Elastic Clause if you're going to understand federalism in the least. So let's start really quick with the definition and if you know who I am, you know I do this all the time. Federalism is the division of power between the federal government and the states. And how we define that is with the U.S. Constitution. So basically, the state power rests in the 10th Amendment. Right? And the 10th Amendment reserved power states that anything that's not in the Constitution, that's not given to the federal government to do, is reserved for the states. Which means that the federal government gets its power from the Constitution. So when we look at the Constitution and we look for governmental power, federal power, it's really all over. But its biggest concentration is in Article 1, Section 8. This is called delegated power. Article 1 is legislative, and Article 8 is a list of delegated power. We can start with some really big ones. For instance, it says to uh, uh, provide for the common defense and promote the general welfare. It gives the government the ability to coin money and collect taxes. It gives the government the ability to regulate trade between the states and commerce and to promote the useful arts, and there's kind of military stuff in there. And then we get to the Elastic Clause. Right? So if you're going to learn anything, know the 10th Amendment and know Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18. It's the last one in delegated powers. And we can put it up on the wall. To make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or officer thereof. So if the federal government's going to do it, and it's not specifically in the language of the Constitution, is it, uh, is it constitutional? Can we do that? Yeah. If we can rationalize that what we are doing is to execute one of those delegated powers. So if you're an original and intentionalist, you're looking at those words very carefully and you want really a direct line between the law being passed and the actual words and maybe even what you think the founders meant, that's intentionalism, um, and you're really going to limit the federal government. And that's definitely, you know, a legitimate ideology. On the other side of the coin, we have language in the delegated powers that's a little broad to promote the general welfare, to regulate the commerce between the states. So that type of language has been used with the elastic clause next to it to do some things that aren't directly in the Constitution. The National Bank was created because the government has the power, according to the Constitution, to uh, borrow money, to establish credit, and Hamilton argued that the elastic clause gave the government that corresponding power to create a national bank to execute that foregoing power. So you decide. You decide whether you want to be somebody who is expansionary, and that's at the expense of the Tenth Amendment, perhaps, or somebody who is, you know, maybe quite limiting in the federal government's power, and you're in love with the Tenth Amendment, and that might maybe hamper the government's ability to solve a very legitimate problem, but you get to decide, because we live in America. All right, there you go, the Elastic Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18. Make sure you watch other lectures and you know where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you next time on the YouTubes.